thing to remember is to prepare all needed materials in a clean and well sanitized surface. Some of the basic materials that you must ready are sterilized gloves, disinfectants like alcohol, isopropanol benzalkonium chloride, and povidone iodine solution. Next is cotton balls, antibacterial creams or gels, gauze, and medical tapes. The next principle is to assess the wound. Here, you are going to inspect and evaluate the wound by checking its location, length, width, and depth. Next principle is to cleanse the wound. Run the area in a running water to remove debris or dirt. Remember, before dealing with a wounded person, also wash your hands thoroughly and wear sterilized gloves. You may use alcohol or isopropanol benzalkonium chloride for cleaning the surrounding skin on the wound but not directly on it to prevent hurting the person and drying the wound. Use povidone iodine solution for cleaning the wound itself. Remember to dab only so you will not worsen the wound situation and not hurt the person. The fourth principle is to fill the wound of medical gels or cream. This is done to ensure the healing of wound and for the prevention of infection. Lastly is to cover and secure the wound. Here, you are going to use gauze pad or any gauze to protect the wound from debris or dirt and other factors. Make sure that the gauze is not too small or big but just fits perfectly for the wound. Use medical tapes like transport, micropore, or cloth tape to prevent the gauze from falling. Make sure that the tape is not too tight that it suffocates the area but rather just sticks snugly to hold the cover in place. After cleaning the wound, apply the dressing. Place the middle of the base on the victim's forehead above the eyebrow while the hem is on the outside. Let the apex fall on the back of the victim's head. Bring the two tails around the back of the victim's head. Cross them over the point and carry them around the forehead. Tie in a square knot. Hold the compress or dressing firmly with one hand while the other one gently pulls down the apex. To secure the compress. Tuck the excess fabric on the hem of the bandage. For forehead injuries, first put the cloth around the victim's forehead, then get both tails of the cloth from the victim's nape and place it up front. From there, make a knot to secure the cloth. Make sure the cloth will not fall. And lastly, tuck the excess fabrics. For ear and cheek injury, first, clean the wound and apply dressing. Put the apex near the injured ear of the victim. The tails of the bandage must frame the victim's face. One tail on the top of the head and the other one goes from jaw to the temple. Then pull the tails making them meet on the head's temple. And do a cross point by pulling the tail from the front in both upward and backward motion. In doing so, Pull the other tail downward on the front, forehead above the eyebrows. Let the two end on the meat at the other side of the head and do a square knot. Tie the excess fabric. For burn hand injury, first, cool the burn area with running water. You may apply burn gel or cream after drying it. Then you may secure the burn area with gauze and medical tape.
Step 1. For folding the apex, tie the apex about 2 inches and create a knot. For bandaging, first, bend the injured arm. Second, place the triangular bandage vertically over the victim's shoulder. Third, the apex must be on the injured elbow. Fourth, fold the base until the forefingers of the hands are seen. Bring the hanging end over the shoulder of the victim, covering the injured area. Fifth, bring the tails over the adjacent shoulder and tie it on a square knot. Lastly, tuck the excess fabric from the tied apex and form a square knot. There are two ways to bandage ankle injury. One way is to place a bag of ice inside the triangular bandage, wrap the bandage on the injured foot, and make a knot to secure the bandage. Another way is to use a bandage, wrap around the injured foot starting with the foot's body, wrap around near the toes with more pressure to make the fluids run up, make sure to leave the heel uncovered, and also make sure the toes can move. After applying the bandage, pinch the toes to help the fluids run back faster and reduce the swelling.